Sup everyone, Darkscream217 here, with me as a guest who went on hiatus, but is now back for one more time on my channel, Multiplayer. Hello. Hey everyone, I'm here. And he's mostly abandoning YouTube to pursue uh, being an artist, which I completely support. But he's here, and he's back, as well as this little special that I actually enjoy doing. I do like doing these uh, anime chart look uh, preview lookies for a couple things. One, to show my subscribers what's out there. Now, I know some of these shows already started this season, but uh, I usually do them always late in December. And even though I'm probably not going to watch a good chunk of the anime, regardless of quality, I still like talking about them and just giving out my you know pre-impression thoughts on it. Yeah. Yeah. So, with that being said, let's bring back the winter 2012-2013 anime chart. So, um, who wants to go first? Um, I don't know. I guess I can do this first one here. Alright, alright. Anyways, um, we'll put a link in the description. You can read along with us. Um, I haven't seen the list, although people were already kind of talking about it in front of me, so some things are probably a little spoiled of me, but uh, the reason why I don't like to look at these lists until I do the video is because I want to be uh, just a surprise when I read it out, uh, re when I, you know, read out the synopsis of what's available, uh, surprise in a good way or a bad way. Yeah, we've come across some gems. Yeah. Anyway, you're f you, you start like you did the last time. <clears throat> All right. First up is a uh, adaptation of a guidebook called Boku no Imoto wa Osaka Okan. The anime adapts from Chiwike Shupan's a popular Osaka Okan rule, Osaka Mama rules, and Osaka rule books that offer a tongue-in-cheek guide to dealing with people from Osaka, particularly stereotypical Osaka mothers. Wow. In the story of the anime. Kiyosuke has spent about a decade living apart from his little sister, Namika. Now, Kiyosuke is looking forward to reuniting with his sister as they live together again, but Namika is um, nothing like he remembers. Okay, your pronunciation on characters and names have actually uh, improved a little. <laughs> I was trying really hard. <laughs> it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's a good thing because, you know, you're improving, but it's a bad thing because it's kind of fun to see you botch the language. The only criticism I have is I think his name is supposed to be pronounced Kiyosuke. I'll, I'll probably botch okay. a lot of anyway, things. Anyway, the second half of the anime... Um, doesn't sound like it matches with the first half, how it's being described as a, as yeah. a book about how to deal with people from Osaka. Okay, that's a very specific, you know, rule book, especially to make an anime adaptation out of. Um, I don't know much about Osaka. All I know is that every time anime gets translated, uh... <laughs> Whenever they have characters from Osaka or anywhere in the Kansai region, they either have a southern accent or a Brooklyn accent. Uh, I don't know. This yeah. anime doesn't, you know, appeal to me. I don't think I'm ever going to Osaka in my lifetime. Um, you know, this one. Yeah, I don't really care for it either. This one, I might give get a pass. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, oh, oh, and yeah, I think the show restarted. I'm not sure. Anyways, my turn. Saki, Achika Hand, episode of Side A? Last episode of the series. Or last episode. Okay. okay, that means I had predecessors, which I haven't seen yet. The Achika Girls Academy and Nara once defeated regional Mahjong powerhouse Bensei High School. It advanced into the national team semifinals, but lost to the eventual champion, and the Mahjong Club was later disbanded. Six years later, elementary school student Shizuno Takamoko, uh, ta Takakamo be French transfer student Nodoka Haramura. The two eventually enter Achika Girls, but Nodoka transfers out of the school in the second year. When Shizuno sees Nod Nodoka on television the following year as the National Middle School Individual Mahjong Champion, she decides to revive the Achika's Mahjong Club. I never played Mahjong. 
Yeah, I don't know what Mahjong is. And I think this is a continuation from a series, too. It even says at the beginning, last episodes of Side A, I don't feel like going back and starting from there. Yeah. Uh, wow. Not, 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 not off to a good start, man. Um, Two skips. Yep. This next one looks a little interesting, though. Yeah, this has got blood and everything. All right, so Vanna Game. This story follows a young man named Kazuya Shibuya. Yeah. <laughs> Kazuya <laughs> Shibuya. <laughs> <laughs> Who receives an anonymous email message out of the blue one day. Won't you join the Savannah Game? The message is an invitation to a state-sanctioned killing game. A deadly <laughs> role-playing game designed to motivate inhibited youth in modern Japan. Shibuya and his two friends... Kotigawa and Kudo find themselves in bizarre battles that span the time, a uh, space time continuum. What? With everything from dragons to the Shing Seng Yumi Force of the Shogunite era. So, what you're saying, this is Battle Royale meets Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that? That's what it sounds like. Okay. Uh, I might watch it. <laughs> it sounds pretty weird. You know, they've added some new things on this little catalog. I think it's saying that it was based off of a novel. I'm not sure if the novel was visual or not. Um. Yeah. Uh. It's a little dark. It's interesting. At first, it started to sound like Battle Royale. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, deadly role playing game to, uh, to motivate the youth of modern Japan. Um, Battle Royale was. It was youth involved in some way. I forgot what the main reason was. It's been a while since I seen the movie. But um, I'm not sure. Yeah, it, it, this this might appeal to the uh, to the dark to, to the people who like their anime to be dark and edgy. Um, it looks pretty dramatic. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot of uh, happiness in that screenshot. Yeah, I don't know. Even though I don't like a lot of dark shows lately, I've been getting a kick of it. I downloaded Corpse Party for the PS Vita. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I, I'm not even a survival horror fan either. Yeah, I gotta check that out. I do love survival horror. Uh, All right, it's a good thing you got a Vita too. Yep. You can download that. It's only 500 megs on the thing. All right. Well, anyway, Savannah Game slightly better. I may watch at least the first episode, maybe, and then see where it goes from there. Yeah, I think I can give it a watch. Okay, next one on my list. Oh, Jesus Christ, on a crutch. Tente <laughs> Opera Milky Holmes alternative, alternative to Opera Kobayashi and the Raven of the Void. All right, here we go. Alternative 2 serves as a sequel to Tente Opera Milky Holmes Alternative 1, Kobayashi Opera 2 5 Mai no Kaigo. The spin-off specials are set in an alternate storyline in which the girl detectives do not lose their toys that grant them special powers. They visit Abra Kobayashi in London, but as soon as they arrive, they are asked to solve a case of five paintings and confront the thief Moran. Okay, first off, again, continuation of something else that is actually based off of an alternate continuity of something I never really cared about in the first place. Yeah, it's a, it must have a big fan following, but uh, Man, I was never interested. I'm cynicism, too. It makes me come off as pretty cynical. <laughs> even, though yeah. even though I've ranted about this, but Jesus Christ, man, this is... It, 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 yeah. I mean, if you're a fan of, of Milky Holmes, go right ahead. Give it a watch. Um, as for me, um, if I ever do want to watch this, I have to go back and, you know, watch the... Uh, the first season alternative world at the very least but I just don't feel motivated to watch it I've yet to be given a reason to do so yeah I'm definitely not going to be watching it either okay, I hope the next one I hope the next one on the list will uh... okay never mind you read it <laughs> <laughs> Huchimas Petite Idolmaster this story follows the overly hyper daily life of the 765 pro idols of the Idol Master, the mysterious creatures named Puchidoru, who uh, resemble the idols. This looks like a cartoonishly spin off of the Idol Master anime adaptation, which is in itself based off of a video game. Yeah. 
I don't I don't know what to think about that. I heard from some people Idol Master was good, but I never gave it a watch. Um same here. Uh never gave it a watch either. I am curious about the game too. Uh I I just want to see how it works, but they never I don't think they localized it. Uh, even though I'm pretty sure there's a demand for it. Yeah. Mm. Eh. Probably probably another skip for me. Unless it's it's hilarious. Yeah, it has to be like super hilarious. The character designs are certainly funny to look at, so Yeah they are. <laughs> Alright. Next one on the list. I my me, which has nothing to do with strawberry eggs. <laughs> the story follows girls in a manga club. Sounds good so far. I yeah. my me oh that's why. And Punika Senpai might be fighting evil invaders threatening Earth, facing <laughs> off against rivals in tournaments, and dealing with other absurd situations when they are not drawing manga? This sounds amazing. <laughs> okay. And, and, and right. a chick is holding a tentacle monster in the picture. Oh, okay, I didn't know, notice that until now. <laughs> I am going to do more research, because I do not want another R15 fuck-up. Oh, R15 was pretty bad. This does sound like something that may, may interest me, but like I said, I'm going to delve deep into it. I'm going to see if I can find like a scanlation of the manga, read a few pages, see if that interests me, and if that's the case, I will give this a watch sometime in the future. But, if I take a look at this, and this is not been, it's boring the hell out of me or something, then I'm not even going to bother with the anime, because most of the times the anime adaptations come off as a little bit on the weak side. So, yeah. Um, uh, I'm on me. I want to watch it, but I gotta dig, dig, dig deeper into it first. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably give it a watch and check it out, too. Alright, next. Okay. AKB 0048 Next Stage. Related to the AKB 0048 series, I would hope so. In the original series, uh, an interplanetary war broke out at the start of the 21st century. Earth's ecosystem was damaged and humanity was forced to flee the planet. In this new society, things that disturb the heart like music and art are forbidden 48 years later a legendary idol group is resurrected as the AKB 0048 labeled as terrorists they must take up arms to defend their careers and their fans Actually, okay. That's, that's the, well, 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 okay describe that okay reaction because the premise doesn't I, sound too bad I'm a little bit confused. <laughs> okay. Like it, it's kind of it's kind of an odd mix of uh, of like post apocalyptic things with um, like footloose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it might be good. I'm not sure. The art style kind of resembles more of a, a shojo type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um. I really hate when shojo does does that type of textures in the picture where they just kind of like sort of paste a texture on the picture. Okay. It looks weird. Okay, okay. Um, again, this is a sequel, so if I need to watch it, I need to watch the first season first. I wonder if this is all, like, adapted from that Akihabara idol group, AKB48. Because that's an actual group. Huh. Yeah. I wonder if that was, like, based off of them or something. Someone's gonna tell I, us. I, I think so, because... In the, uh, in the based off section, it says idol group, so... Ah! Okay, there's my answer. Alright, anyway. So I guess it's something, if you're a fan of the group, you would enjoy more. Well, um, I never... Wait, wait. Did they do the music? I think... I could be wrong, but I think they did the Sugar Rush theme in Wreck-It Ralph. Oh, did they? That would be cool. <laughs> it was the only J-pop song in the game... Uh, in the soundtrack so that narrows it down I, I I think so I'm not entirely sure anyway uh, I'm giving a maybe because the story is pretty interesting I guess yeah it, it, it's a basically uh, if it's done right you could do messages about how art should be defended yeah yeah something that you know we I like to you know push for yeah we personally defended all right next show Ore no Kanojo to Osa Nana Jimmy Gashirabasugaru. That's a massive name. 
a space opera light novel, a young boy called Ata enters high school aiming for the National University School of Medicine. Because of his parents' divorce and his goal, he shuns anything to do with romance or love. Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> One day, Mazusu, the school beauty with the silver hair who's just returned to the country, enters his life in the most unexpected way. Chiwa, his childhood friend since elementary school, will not let this go without a fight. Okay, this is this is something I've been wanting to talk about. I'm I, I'm surprised I haven't established this drinking game before, but probably because this is the first time an anime actually has a high school setting listed on this list. Uh. <laughs> but this is still so so so. It's just your is 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 a is a freshman in high school. Until one day, this person so so so, and his life changes forever. It's it's that yeah. scenario again. <laughs> it, it looks like the very stereotypical like the harem, which I will watch under the condition that he eventually picks a girl because that seems to never be done ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Now, I don't know. The character. The, the art design doesn't look appealing to me. Um, the, uh, none of the character designs stand out to me. Um, yeah, it's it's something I'll watch if I get like if I get bored then I have some free time. But like it's not gonna be like on the top of my list because it it's doesn't it doesn't stand out in any way. Yeah, I, as for me, I'm gonna give it a pass even if I am bored. I'll just do something else. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Moving right along. Um, oh god. Well, this one's quick for you. Oh wow. Okay. Minami K. Tada Ima. Uh, the fourth season of Minami K. We didn't watch any of Minami K before this, did we? No. And the, what is with that chick's hair in the bottom? I know. That picture. Looks like a walnut. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I want to hit it with a hammer now. I'll probably give it a pass because this didn't tell me, like, anything. I'll give it a pass because I have to find out what the first one I'm okay is. And, again, continuation of a season of a series I haven't watched. Okay, next one on the list. Senran Kagura. Anime adaptation of Senran Kagura. A side-scrolling action game featuring female ninjas. Yes. Wow. <laughs> uh... Not to pull double standards, and I have to be a little fair, but as I've been vocal about Naruto before and its designs, these don't look like ninjas. But they're hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's your reasons. They, they look more like ninjas than Naruto's ninjas. At um, least. At least the chick in the plaid skirt, ironically, looks more like a ninja than Naruto ninjas. Um... I'm going to have to do more research on Senran Kagura if I want to give the anime a watch. Uh, it, like, it at least told me what it adapted from, and it gave like a quick three-word synopsis. Uh, female ninjas. Side scroll. Uh, um, as a rule, I check out everything with ninjas. So Yeah. I'm going to have to, <laughs> I'm gonna have to like, like uh, I'm, uh, I'm I, me, I'm going to have to uh, do some research. Yeah, I'll probably uh, I'll probably give it a watch, and I guess we will move on to this next one, which looks dark and edgy. Uh, Bakumatsu Gijin uh, Roman. This game story follows Roman, a phantom thief who operates at night in the Genroku era, 1688 to 1704. The anime Bakumatsu Gijin. Ah. Gijinden, Roman, or Roman, I have no idea how to pronounce that, I don't know if it's supposed to be like the Japanese word, or like the English word, will shift the time frame to Bakumatsu, the era that spelled the end of the Shogun's rule over Japan. Adapted from a pachinko game. You know, um, from this angle, kind of looks a little like Kamina. You know, he he kind of does. He probably you know, he does it once we see like a full color art of him, but you know, just he's got the, the way glasses and everything. I don't know if he has glasses or it's just the way it was shaded, but yeah. Um, 
based off of a pachinko game, apparently. This is it's kind of odd. Hmm. That's that's kind of I maybe I guess this is like I don't know anything about the uh, the Genroku era at Me all. Me neither. So. No, I don't even know shit about the Sengoku era, and they've made a lot of anime and video game adaptations off of that. Yeah. Okay. Um. Next one. Uh, courtesy of Zetai Karen Children, the Unlimited Yobo Kiyosuke. Spin-off of that series. The story was. I'm not. Gonna... <laughs> the story will center Kiyosuke Hiobu, who also appears in the original series. Whoop de doo. The plot summary from the original series serves as follows. In a world where ESP is common, only three people have them at the highest possible level. Level 7. Though, by the way, that's a pretty lame RPG if that's the cap. Those, <laughs> those three are the special ESP team, the children. The children work for Babel, a special expert organization committed to stopping crimes before they happen. <sighs> where have I heard that before? Yeah. Ko- Koichi Mana- Minamoto is assigned to watch over them, and he'll need to because three superpower ten-year-olds are are a problem on their own. Yeah, I'm, I don't plan on watching Minority Report with children. That's... <laughs> That's what, thank you, thank you, I thought you would catch that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give this one a pass, too. Um... The weird thing is it sounds almost like the premise for a comedy, but, like, the the, uh, the screenshot looks super, like... Super serious. Almost... Yeah, almost like Code Geass dramatic type shit going on there. I will laugh if it does turn out to be a comedy because this little screen cap uh, is totally false advertising. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um. So yeah, it doesn't look like a show I would catch. Your turn. Senyu, a gigantic hole suddenly opened up in the world one day, and demons appeared. Well, I guess that's as good of a reason as any. <laughs> <laughs> the Keegan, uh, the Keegan, where did that come from? The king thinks that this port, uh, port ends the return of the demon king Ruku Medes. Uh, <laughs> it's gone, it's gone. I've lost my powers. Who was sealed away by the hero Kiri Ashi? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> A millennium ago, the king decreed that the um, descendants of the hero must take up uh, must take on the threat, and seventy-five people showed up. Hero number forty-five, Aruba, and the sadistic palace warrior Rosu team up, and their adventure begins. Certainly, don't look very sadistic. I'm thinking he's the guy on the left. He's the only person that would look at least a little more sadistic. Yeah. I... Uh, this is... I don't know. This is sort of like... I really like how generic their reason is for, for demons invading the land, though. <laughs> Open up a big hole. They show up. What it's literally impossible. So. <laughs> <laughs> like, who would do that? And by the way, on the demon perspective... Well... Then again, these, these were imprisoned demons, but if a hole opened up in my world, I'm not going to just jump into the other world, because who knows, my head might explode due to the uh, chemicals, due to the uh, oxygen that's in there or something. It could be completely different, whatever. Anyways, um... I don't know. I might check it out. When when I read the word sadistic uh, for one of the uh, sadistic, for one of the characters, I immediately start thinking uh, Sundari. Uh, that that word flashes around in my head. I think Rose is a male. I think he's a male character. I, I guess. <laughs> These are bitches. Grade A bitches. Any. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. I don't know. Um. Uh, I'm gonna put this on the maybe section. Yeah, I, I'll put it there, too, until I hear a little more about it. All right. Um, and next one. Oh, God, another season. Uh, another second season, I bet. Boku wa Tomodachi ga Sukunai next. Sequel to that series. The story revolves around Kodaka, a half-Japanese, half-British transfer student who's delinquent, like blonde hair, fierce eyes, scare people, and a seemingly perpetual selling girl named Yozura. The two decide to form a Jinibu club for misfits at Harley with hardly any friends. Yeah, passing. Anyway. 
<laughs> you just motored on through that. You're like, yeah, this is you know, I don't know. I'm just the, the art... sick and tired of reading continuing seasons of stuff. At least the first time I did the Winter thing, we had more original stuff. That's I like how polished the art is, at least. That's all I can say about it. I think I remember reading the synopsis to the first book of Watoma Dachi God. That's why it looked so fucking familiar to me. But uh, I didn't even give a damn then. I don't give a damn now. Yeah, I'll probably pass too. Yeah, like I said, the these whole continuous continuations of other seasons is starting to get on my nerves. Yeah, it looks like there's a lot second of seasons of shows I want to see, like Penny and Stocking or anything. So, uh, that would be awesome if they released a second season to Penny and Stocking. They probably won't, but I would love it for. I'm still holding out a good ten percent of hope. Yeah. Unfortunately, all the crazy natural disaster crap happened right when we thought they were going to put it into production. Uh, well, I don't know what the hell happened. I don't think they were planning to put it into production. I think Gynax was just fucking with everyone. Or they were just teasing us. Yeah, they were. Te they're just kind of teasing everybody because that's because Gynax is Gynax. So. All right. Well, the next one is Sasami Son at Gambara. Uh -huh. Gen Bara Nai. This story follows. Oh Jesus, Hikiko Mori, Shudden, <laughs> named the Sasami, who is unmotivated about everything changing clo uh, even changing clothes or eating. Her brother takes care of her. Wow, even though she despises his slave-like nature. This this sounds really bad so far. Sasami spends her days viewing the outside world via a brother surveillance tool on her computer. In the outside world, the three beautiful Yagami sisters and Sasami's brother are in the middle of relationships uh, worthy of romantic comedy. It sounds pretty bad. I don't like the main character at all. <laughs> like, at all. Me neither. And she shares the name of a character I actually like from the Tenchi series. Yeah, so I was hoping that would give it more points, but it did not save it. I don't know, the Hikikomori thing was starting just fine up until that last part. Also, it's a romantic comedy. Uh, like, all of a sudden, it, it started to focus on her. Then all of a sudden... It kind of shifts to his brother? Yeah. I don't know. It, it, romantic comedy. Oh, jeez. I'm getting tired of uh, Japanese romantic comedies for some reason. And again, him taking care of her and her despising him also screams Sundari, and I'm still trying to avoid those characters. Yeah. You had plans to do a rant about them, but... Mm. That never happened. Yeah. Maybe one day you'll come back to it. Yeah, give it a pass. Yeah, I'm gonna pass it, too. Done by Shaft, though. Yeah, that means the art style will be kind of trippy. All right, if it's directed by Shimbo. All right, next show, Monday D Chachi Ga Isekai Karaku So Desu I don't know what that translates to. The story follows Isazoi Sakamaki, a boy bored with the entire world. <laughs> wow. Okay. Apparently, I tell this guy to get a hobby, but uh. <laughs> that didn't work. Bored with everything. I'm bored of the Grand Canyon. I'm bored that some dude sky jumped off uh, out of the Earth's orbit. He's like standing I'm in the middle of Gangnam like style. I'm bored of this. <laughs> I'm bored of video games. I'm bored with anime. I'm bored with everything. I'm even He's like bored standing in the middle of. He's like standing in the middle of like a war zone. He's just like. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. One day, an envelope arrives for him. The moment Izuyoi opens the envelope, he is transported to an alternate world. There, he discovers that two other problem children were transported by envelopes as well. A tactic turned girl named Yu Kasukabe with a cat, and a beautiful yet haughty girl named Asuka Kudo. A girl named Kuro Usagi, also known as Black Rabbit, summoned the three to the community, no name, to overthrow the devil. <laughs> what? Okay, I might watch this because that's that's pretty insane. Overthrowing the devil. That's that's like 
it feels like everything on this list is either like so so normal it's boring or so just totally out there. I don't and know it's if like I can handle it. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. If you're gonna watch it, I'll see if I can watch it with you. Yeah, it looks like something that I <laughs> we'll I might watch be the first interested. Episode and see what happens there. Yeah. Next show. Beast Saga, I dig the art style. Um, the story takes place on a distant planet in our galaxy called Beast, where three Beast tribes, the Sea Tribe, the Land Tribe, and the Sky Tribe, fight for their honor. Each of the tribes protect the infinite element, uh, entima, oh. elemental source. Wow. Elemental power source called the God Lot. There wasn't even any Japanese words, and I screwed up. How did that happen? Um, okay, uh, this, this sounds kind of interesting. It, it, it does. I like the art style. Like, the, it reminds me of the old anime. It might be based off of some older, it says multiple in the, uh, in the adaptations area, so, no idea where it came from originally, but I'm, but I'm curious, I'm gonna see if I can look up some origins. I, I will definitely check it out. Um, it, it looks, it might be fun. I, I love, uh. I love things that are really out there and have a lot of battling going on. I love monsters fighting each other. That's always nice. Yeah. They both look like characters from Thundercats on steroids. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Next show, Hitalia, The Beautiful World, the fifth season of Hitalia. When does it end? They all... <gasps> They're all horrible characters, and they all look the same. And I know these complaints have been listed a thousand times, but why do people like this show? I don't understand it. Because the characters look like fucking Bashonins, dude. It garners a female demographic off of that. Oh, and people think the show is funny. Uh, I don't know. I can't watch it. I, I, I just don't want to give it a chance. Speaking as a dude who's a history buff, and, and, and loves his war history to be violent and gritty, too. Yeah. As well as accurate, but mostly violent and gritty. Because that's what war fucking was. I'm not gonna give the show a chance. Wasn't some tea party, and I love how everything else is like really stereotyped and things like that. But Japan is all nice and friendly oh, for bullshit. no particular reason. Oh yeah, because they were so nice and friendly when they started bombing Pearl Harbor. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, uh, if you're gonna like make up, you know, an anime based off of like things in World War Two, at least. Are you just, God, they're just too afraid to make fun of themselves. But let's yeah. make fun of everyone else while we're at it. But we're cool. No, you're not. It's definite skip for me. Oh, definite skip for me. <laughs> no, a lot of nothing can, appeals. I know a lot, but some people might actually motivate me to check out Italia, but like I said, you know, if... Ignoring the the, the the radical fan base aside, even though I don't like the idea of fan bases being an affection on the on the show itself, but let's just for the say for the sake of argument that that there, there's no crazy ass fan base of Yaoi fan girls who who freaking will only care about history if they watch this goddamn show. If they yeah. didn't exist, I would still not give it a chance. I just do not like the concept behind. It looks boring. Like, if it was, uh, spiced up in some way, I, I might check it out. Like, if there was a bunch of factions, and each faction represented a country, and there was, like, some sort of pseudo-battling going on. Personified. That that would be cool. But, yeah, they are per personified as, like, one person, and they all have, like, picnics and stuff. It doesn't sound doesn't riveting. Sound like my cup of tea. Yeah. So, yeah, like... All right. J.G. Boo. Short stories about the lives of high school students based off of a light novel, and we got these crazy chibi characters. And that's that's all there is. I... I don't know. It depends on how good the short stories are. It doesn't describe any of the short stories in, in no. this section. I like the chibi art style, but... Uh, I don't know if that is going to be the official art style, but let's say it is. But It's adorable looking, but... Yeah, again, it it depends on the stories themselves. If they have some yeah. pretty wacky antics, maybe. Um, if it's everything else I've seen before, or if it's too dull and tries to mark it off by just being cute and only being cute and not being entertaining, then no. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, 
I need to do more research, definitely on that one. I know a lot. Of, I know I've been listening at all before, but I'm I'm waiting for one show that will make me go, damn! I'm not gonna research this. I'm gonna watch it immediately because I used to do that a couple of times. Yeah. But everything's either making me disliking it or putting me to a feeling of uncertainty. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a maybe, right. but more than likely, uh, yeah. All right. Next one, DC three, Decapo three, related to the Decapo series. <laughs> I know it's a third season of something I haven't watched, so I'm not looking forward to talking about this. Kiyotaka is a second year student at Kazumi Gaguen, who which who is part of the news club along with the school idol Rika. His emoto like Osanana Jimi Himeno, his mixed ray cousin Charles, hard working Kohai who skipped the gray in his class Sarah, and Adric but in spirit, but weak body Aoi. Or weekend body Aoi. One day, all the news club members get a message on their cell phones telling them to do something with a promised place when the sakura begins to bloom. These mysterious cell phone messages are just really popping up everywhere, aren't they? They yeah. make out of the rest of the message, but are surprised that it was dated 1951. Rika was... what? That doesn't make any sense. Rika <laughs> Yeah, text messages don't fucking appear in 1951. Someone obviously hacked uh, Dr. That. Rika was extremely curious about the message and the sunning bloom in the sakura, so she called everyone to solve me. It's not a mystery that. I give a damn about, that's for sure. Yeah, it doesn't sound like anything. Uh, <clears throat> it doesn't sound like anything I particularly care about. I don't see how you can do like a very long series with something like that, so it's probably going to be short. And, um, it, it doesn't sound like anything that, that awesome. I'm gonna have to put a, but I'm gonna have to say something in the description, um, apologizing for my cynical attitude. But <laughs> I'm gonna give it a pass unless someone tells me it's awesome. This is why I don't check out a lot of recent anime these days. I don't want to say new anime is bad, but the t but the new anime that they do try to push isn't my cup of tea. It, it might be appealing to to you guys. Uh, you, you know, you might look at this and go, I disagree. This show does look great power to you. I don't know, there's been a few shows on this list that I, I think I can stand to watch, so so like far said, it isn't I wouldn't watch terrible. Them, but I'm going to avoid being royally disappointed, so I'm going to see if I can dig a little deeper. Yeah. Like I said, dude, I'm, I'm sorry, but R15 just pissed me off that much. Uh, it was it was pretty bad. I don't think we ever did a review of that. We, we should talk no, about no, it one day. Did, no, we did talk about it. We did. Oh, we did? In our worst anime uh, panel. Oh, okay. That that definitely should have been in that panel. So. <laughs> and, 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 to re and to review it means I would have to watch the whole damn thing. I can't get past three episodes. Yeah, that was that was an ongoing joke for a while. Yeah. Next show, Chihaya Furu second season. All right, your turn. All right, Chihaya Furu second season. Chihaya Ains. <laughs> I S I I R I what I don't know how to pronounce that. Ayase. Ayase. There you go. Chihara Ayase is a frank but ebullient girl who becomes fascinated by the obscure world of competitive Karuta, a card game based on Japanese poetry. Introduced uh, to the aggressive style of the game by quiet and thoughtful elementary school classmate named Arata Wataya, the two quickly become close friends. They start playing as a group with Taichi Mashima, Chihara, smart and athletic childhood friend. Wow, I'm, I'm really butchering this entire description. Until they have to part ways during their middle school years due to several circumstances. As their high school life begins, they meet once again. I was not excited to read that. It sounds off to me. You didn't sound excited. <laughs> also, it's the second season of something, so... I think I was in pain as I read that. Uh, gonna give it a pass because it's the second season. I have to watch the first one, and I don't feel like watching the first one. I barely... I, I you don't barely... even remember what the hell you said, did you? No. <laughs> I very rarely check out animes with card games, and uh, this one's based off poetry. 
So definitely no. <laughs> All right, my turn. Hakaden Toho Haken Ibu. The story reimagines the setting from the classic Hakaden samurai novel with supernatural elements. The original 106 volume novel by Kyoto Baken, holy shit, is set in the Tomotio Sengoku period again and tells the story of eight samurai half-brothers and their adventures with them themes of loyalty and family and honor as well as Confucianism, Bushido, and Buddhist philosophy. All of them descend from a dog and a bear the word dog in their surnames. Source for... Oh, wait. From a dog? So there's one of their names is probably like Inu Nobunaga or some shit like that, I don't know. Do they mean a literal dog? I... What other dog exists? I don't know. <laughs> they didn't like, say dog with a capital D, so they're not referring to the bounty hunter. I don't. I don't know why they would descend from a from a literal dog. That's that's kind of. They're all descend, descendants from dogs because you because evolution is a lie <laughs> or something. <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, reality happened. In all seriousness, uh, there was. One anime I was interested in that was based off of the Sengoku era, but then it turns out I really wasn't. Yeah. I don't even remember the name of the title. I have to go back and watch it. I don't know. I don't care about the Sengoku period. I care about American history. <laughs> uh, Sorry, it's just what I grew up with, and I'm more fascinated with that. I, I might check it out. You know, it's Studio Dean's on it, um, so maybe uh, it's of a. Uh... 106 volume novel, so it, I don't know. It might be like a million episodes long. I wonder. I wonder if the dog thing is part of the supernatural element. I hope it has a supernatural element because I don't want to just watch a bunch of samurai walk what? around and do stuff. I'd rather read the novels. <laughs> 106 volumes. What kind of fucking story did you need to tell that warranted that many volumes? Yeah. I like how it doesn't have anything Christian in it because it seems like more and more anime is getting like super Christian and uh, throwing Christian themes in it. And I'm glad this is about, actually has some Eastern stuff in it. Want to sidetrack and talk about Angel Beats? Feel free to spoil anything to me because I didn't watch any more, any more of it. And when you told me how what you said at the end makes me want to watch it less. <laughs> Well, I mean, Angel Beats was a good anime. Just like it started off as sort of like almost atheist-centered anime, where it's just like, hey, God doesn't exist, and all this other stuff. Then right in the middle of it, God does exist, and it becomes completely focused on God and God's love, and how even if your life shit, God loves you. And then it. By the way, I don't believe in that fucking philosophy. I know a lot of Christians do. I don't. It's kind and of so... why I'm agnostic. You know, it, it sort of ends on that note, but I don't understand who their audience was because at the beginning they piss off yeah. anyone who's religious, and then in the middle they piss off anyone who's not religious, and it leaves no one. So yeah, did, I don't know. Didn't you didn't you say you had a friend who was a devout Christian that got pissed off over the password to their little house system? Yeah, it was so the pissed off she didn't continue watching. For those it. who don't know, and I'm not really giving a huge spoiler because this isn't the very first episode. Uh, they had a password to their little club hideout, and it, the password was like, there is no God Buddha or whatever, or something like that. And yeah. Apparently that was enough, that, that was offensive enough to set off that one Christian. Imagine what it would do to someone who's probably even more Christian. <sighs> Cuticle Detective uh, Inaba. The story revolves around Hiroshi Inaba, a private detective and part wolf, part human being who was created artificially. Hiroshi runs his own detective agency and solves cases and uh, with the help of his cross-dressing secretary, Yuta, and Kei, a relatively normal teenager. The plot uh, centers around Hiroshi and the, and the gang trying to arrest his arch-nemesis, Don Valentino, a mastermind goat with a taste for money, literally. That sounds amazing. <laughs> it does actually. Uh, a half wolf detective. That, that's I haven't something seen it been done before. Watch it out. I haven't seen it been done before. And there are no vampires, which is it's good. It's good to see werewolves without vampires. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Don't spoil it. What if it's one of Valentino's henchmen? Oh god. 
That's going to happen now. That is an awesome <laughs> villain name, by the way, Don Valentino. I know, but it's a, it's a goat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a goat. Wolf versus goat. Okay, um... Uh... It feels like Japan acknowledges everything's been done before, so they're just thinking super outside the box now. <laughs> okay, uh... Maybe. I'm gonna see I'm gonna see if I can watch the first episode of that. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out. Okay, um... Next show... You but you're excited for this one. <laughs> I'm rubbing my eyes in frustration. <laughs> you can see why Lance is kind of upset at this season list. Not, not only is it a second season, it's like CGI... Okay, the show is really called CG <laughs> Fairies, whatever. A fully, computer, a fully computer animated series sent around three little fairies who live inside the trees in fairy forests. They have weak magical powers, but they also have the mental and time room where they f can freely use magic, as well as the fear lake when we're shaking pure other worlds. This looks like a dumb kid show. I'm gonna skip it. Yeah, it probably is a dumb kid show. What is this? Code Lyoko? Wait, yeah. actually. I should, uh, let me rephrase that. This is just a kid show. Just <laughs> I don't like, I forgot, I don't like to call shows dumb. <laughs> well, actually, I do if I'm thinking about them negatively. Which I am. Yeah. You know what? It is a dumb kid show. <laughs> this, this just sounds like something that I would never watch. Um, it does not look never that ever great. Never watch, never, ever, ever, never, ever, for never, 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 and never. The uh, Outcast. I would, I'm actually surprised you know that song. <laughs> I actually hate this genre. I, I don't want. Like, I used to listen to Outkast. Surprisingly, I forgot about that. I do love that song. Yeah, it was a pretty. That's a pretty cool song. All right, next show. Ishida to Asakura. The story centers around the friendship of high school boys. The co-lead. Asakura wants to become a teacher at a girls' school in the future, while Ishida wants to become a florist with uh, Asakura in the future. That that sounds incredibly dull and normal. Too normal. It's way too normal, which is strange because the art style looks super Bobo-ish. Bobo-bo. I think the guy, yeah, I know, the guy must have a man fur or something. He's also sticking a pencil up his nose. I uh, probably won't check it out because it it sounds it sounds pretty dull. It sounds like something that like your your friends are telling you about, and then like you tune you know, them I out. Think, I think okay. I, I think I realize why I stopped doing this list. <laughs> <laughs> I think I why I think I I think I see why I haven't done this in a year. <laughs> this is. This is pretty. This is pretty. This, uh, this is this. This list actually unleashes the worst in me. It really does. Well. Oh well. Next show. <laughs> Tamako Market, an original story not based on pre-existing material. Yeah. The commercial website's tagline reads: "Rice cakes freshly pounded." It's like they wrote that beginning part just for you. <laughs> Now Yamada of Kayon is directing, and Reiko Yoshida, who worked on Kayon Bakuman, is in charge of the series scripts. Another Kayon veteran who just designed the characters. The person who who worked on Lucky Star is designing the characters. So are they all going to look the same? Okay, I'm sorry. I know it's it's. It looks more like your show. favorite fucking show, actually, judging from the screen cap. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh. I don't, I don't know, it's, um... I don't even know what the show's about. You know what, I'm gonna fucking look it up on Wikipedia and just get, get this over with. It's about rice cakes being yeah, freshly pounded. <laughs> it, it sounds... Sounds... It sounds a lot like normal. K on actually, just because, like, it's a... If it's a bunch of people eating rice cakes, that's pretty much what K-On was. So they were eating, like, a uh, cake and dessert and things like that, and playing the bands... I didn't finish the second season of I forgot K this was an original series, so there's no pre-existing material explaining the plot. They have a list of the characters on Wikipedia. Um, 
Let's see, Tamako is a first-year high school whose family runs a mochi shop in the town cyber district called Tamaya. She enjoys her high school life in a baton club with friends. She helps her family with the shop and invent new kinds of mochi. I don't know. This show, yeah, this show just sounds like, you know, rice cakes. If you fucking love rice cakes. Wait, isn't that what mochi is? Let me check. <laughs> yeah. If you love rice cakes, this is the show for you. Mochi. 10 out of 10. It's a Japanese rice cake made of glutinous rice. Okay. If you love rice, then this may be the anime for you, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm giving this a pass. All right, next we have a weird-looking mix of steampunk and medievalness going on here. Hey, it's Studio Arms who brought us wonderful stuff like um, Queen's Blade and Inky Toast and Dragon Destiny, and continuing on from that. And, uh, God, what was the name of that one? Oh, Seika no Quasar. It sounds like this might be something I will watch then. <laughs> Mao you, Mao you, show. In a world embroiled by war between humans and demons, the human's greatest hero invades the demon queen's castle, determined to vanquish her. However, instead of fighting back, the queen proposes an alliance with the hero. She explains how a sudden end to the war can bring further chaos to the world, as the humans once united to stand against their common enemies uh, would eventually begin fighting among themselves. With similar issues already occurring at the Deeming Realm, convinced by her wor uh, convinced by her words, the hero joins forces with the queen, and together they execute a plan to bring prosperity and lasting peace between both humans and demons alike. Well, it's original. Yeah, and I also like the fact that the demons themselves are portrayed as you know, twirly mustache monster evil. Er, kill, 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 kill everything in our way because we're evil, because demons are evil. It seems they actually come off as more ju just as human as the humans. So. And her well, argument makes a lot of like. sense. That's something I actually like to see demons being portrayed as less antagonistic. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I thought from reading as you were reading the synopsis, I thought it was gonna hit Dragon Half territory because there was a major plot point with one of the characters in the show where there was a dragon attacking the town, and the sor and the, so the sorcerer like sent his greatest warrior to slay the dragon. But instead, he fell in love with the dragon and married it. Oh yeah. I thought that was gonna happen there. <laughs> yeah. But no. Nope. That would have been good too. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> this seems to be a pretty serious storyline. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm definitely probably gonna give it a watch. <laughs> yeah, this the art style looks cool. The demon chick looks awesome. Uh, Definitely gonna inspire some cosplayers there. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, that would be cool to see. And next up, you get all the stupid looking things for some reason today. <laughs> Gotta hate you. <laughs> Gone by Lulu Lolo. The story centers around the daily life of two twin bear sisters. The orange color Lulu and the yellow color Lola. Oh, how original. The two take on new jobs and despite the occasion of future failure tears, give their best at skipping this. No, uh, no uh, comment. No freaking comment. Fuck this. That would have been hilarious, though, if, like, even though it looked dumb, it turned out to be like the description made it sound awesome. <laughs> but it didn't have. No, no. It would have been cool, though. <laughs> read the next one. Read it. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm moving on, moving on. Kotora-san, a school fantasy story following Hakura Kotora, a girl who recently transferred to a new school. school. Kotora happens to be able to read people's minds, and she joins the school's ESP club. What is with the ESP club? I've seen this in yeah, multiple saw... things. Well, okay, we, we saw this before in our descriptions, but I don't feel like going back and seeing it, so... You said you've seen this multiple things. Where else, other than Haruhi Suzumiya? Uh, just Haruhi Suzumiya and the one we went through on this list. I'm just wondering, is it like a fad, though? Is it like a new fad? I, I, maybe. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, 
mind reading is not a power I care about or want, even though it does have some great advantages. I prefer telekinesis. I, I do too. I'm glad you said that. If I ever did make like a uh, read people's minds or lift the train and just pile drive it with my mind. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree. I've always I've always thought that. I'm gonna go with the latter. <laughs> I will not check it out because it not just for the you know it sounds so like average, but like I don't particularly care for any of the character designs. Yeah. Next show, Amnesia, based off of a game apparently. Has well, it's kind of cool. Has probably has nothing to do with the Dark Descent, so don't get too excited. Yeah. The story begins on the morning of August first, when the protagonist wakes up and discovers she has absolutely no memories of the past. Just like the title! A boy appears before her and introduces himself as a spirit named Orion. The protagonist struggles to regain her memories under the guidance of Orion. She then gets a phone call, but she does not recognize the name on the mobile phone screen. God damn! She meets her apparent boyfriend despite not knowing his face. Okay, it sounds like the synopsis got, kind of got cut off there. Um, again, mysterious messages that Japanese people keep getting. That's and true. Which leads to bizarre incidents. This is like the third or fourth one we just covered here. <laughs> one of my favorite movies of all time, besides The Mouth of Madness, is uh, is Memento. And I really love Amnesia. I know everyone hates Amnesia plots for some reason. It's considered like this yeah, huge I, thing. I, I know. It's like... Cons I, I, why? I don't understand why people hate Amnesia plots. Um... Maybe it's because it's been, cool. maybe it's because they've seen it a bunch of times. But personally, I do enjoy Amnesia plots because, you know, they provide an aura of mystery of the character. Yeah, and, it's like the ultimate mystery. Yeah, like who is this guy? Why was he here? So, so, so. And then when you, and if done right, when everything's revealed about him, you'll go. <gasps> yeah, lots of twists and turns. So Amnesia, so, Amnesia plots, if done right, are pretty good and. I have nothing against them. I guess it's because they just want to know about the character immediately, and we're not allowed to get developed. But but it also makes it easy for character development, too. So, yeah. It looks dramatic. This is something I'll probably go out of my way to watch. I'll have to wait till your verdict. Okay. Your show... Next up, your show. Oh, boy, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, it looks... It looks... It's so normal. <laughs> <laughs> Yama no so you know, Just so you know, the, re the we're obviously not normal people, and I and I take pride of the of being a, a weirdo, um, in the sense I am kind of a crazy eccentric person who likes this stuff to be crazy and eccentric, and. My friend and I were actually having a conversation about a few things. Uh, we were talking about Big Al's rant earlier this morning about Kids Bob and Gangnam Style, and that, and we're, and we had a friend who was like, "Oh, I don't like that song anymore. It's been pl it's been overplayed to death." And my and Jordan, Jordan says, "Well, yeah, it's it was popular back then, but now it got into the hands of normal people." <laughs> it is true. Man. Gangnam Style got super effing mainstream thanks to you know Glee and stuff. It's no longer popular towards the crazies. As I like. Wait, Gl Glee covered it? I think that's what Al said. Oh man, that's yeah, that's crazy. I, I hate Glee so much. <laughs> you can join his club because he hates Glee too. I would join you, but I never watch Glee because I don't like to kill myself. Okay. <laughs> They they ruin everything great about music. Yeah. All right. Um, the story is about two childhood friends. Oh, how do you pronounce this? Aoi. Yep. Aoi, a girl who prefers to uh, staying inside, and who has ac uh, ac acrophobia. Yeah, fear heights. I think. And Hinata, a girl who loves mountains. How can they coexist? <laughs> this is too wild and crazy for me. The two decide to climb a mountain in order to once again see the morning sun from its peaks as they did when they were young. Boring. That sounds heartwarming. Yeah, it's and boring. boring. <laughs> heartwarming, yet boring. But as for me, 
I'm a cold-hearted motherfucker, so... <laughs> <laughs> you have no desire to warm that soul. No, I'm not. <laughs> Pass. Oh, my God. What? Uh, sorry, I just read the name of this next thing. And just... <laughs> Let's see, it's called... What the fuck? Yeah, I'll, I'll give the last one a maybe, and I'll give this one a probably not. <laughs> okay. Hopefully they pronounce it as Mon Girl as a play on Mandra, and I'm hoping it's not Man Girl. Man -girl. Let's read the synopsis. The oh. story follows the daily life of naive editor Chief Hana and Japan's cutest manga editors as they attempt to realize their dream of launching the number one manga magazine, even though they have zero experience in actually editing manga. Wow. Okay. I was right. At least That's I really so. That was really lost in translation. It, was. <laughs> it really was. They uh, need, if they are going to license either the manga or the anime here, they have to translate it or retitle it to something that's a little less uh, deceiving. Because who knows, maybe there's somebody who's into tran transsexuals that would have been like, hey, this could be a great... Nope. <laughs> On... Uh, Girl, I don't know if I could fucking even if I you know what I am gonna give this anime a watch because it may be something that's up, up my alley. I mean, it may not be as good as Bakuman, which is also about manga making and stuff, but it might be something I may have an interest in, even though it looks like it's trying to be more moe ish than uh character and plot ish. But yeah. if I do enjoy this show. How am I supposed to fucking tell it to some of my friends? <laughs> it's like, oh, what's an anime you've been watching this year? Oh, uh, Man Girl. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mon Girl? Mon Girl? You mean, it's, it's spelled M A N G I R. Oh, you mean like Man Girl? No. What's it about? It's, a, it's about a couple of cutesy manga editors. You liar. <laughs> I just, I uh... No, this, uh,. Lost in translation. Okay, that kind of that kind of warmed up my day a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was worth a laugh. But um, I don't know. Uh, the whole zero experience in ed actually editing manga just sounds like it's setting up for some really hilariously disaster gags. And I love yeah. that. I love it whenever something happens, it ends in complete disaster. <laughs> Disaster gags are awesome. Like, I guess I'll I guess I'll give it to me. Whenever Wiley e. Coyote tries to set up a trap for the forefront, I I always get kicked when it backfires on him and falls off of that hundred foot cliff. <laughs> I just sometimes disaster gags are funny, sometimes they get sad, so it's either it's it's a big hair miss for me, but I'm gonna give it a watch. I'm gonna give it a watch. Actually, All right. This one actually looks a little good. Maybe. I don't know. Roll the dice. Roll Give me Mecha, damn it. There hasn't been one. There hasn't been one Mecha show on this list. Oh my god, you're right. It's depressing to me. That's my genre that everyone else hates but me. <laughs> uh, Alright. Vivid Dread, uh, VV Dread Operation. Sounds like a. Or it could be Vivid Dread Operation. Who knows? The heroine of this girl's science fiction action. Uh, anime is a 14 year old girl who lives with her little sister and grandfather who lives in uh, an impoverished life in various ways and then there's a bunch of bullets which is odd there are five main heroines there is a mecha designer in the main staff of this anime but does he design mechas so... yeah, does he yeah they say he's a mecha designer but is he actually going to design mechas in the show like he's supposed to or are they going to make him design one of the side characters, which will explain the bulky muscles in his machine gun? I'm just kidding. He probably will be a mecha designer. It is a, a peaceful designer. world where science has solved all problems, though, so but, I don't but, know. Then how the fuck are you supposed to have conflict? I don't know. Okay. The story is set on an island teeming with natural surroundings and an artificial island built by science. I don't get it. Science has solved all problems. Why they're so impoverished. The director is also designing the characters. Okay, so they have a mecha well, designer. Well, on you there. skipped who the director was and what he directed. And you did that on purpose to read it. 
I didn't skip it on purpose. I actually just don't read things in the middle. Read it. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Kazuhiro Takumura of Strike Witches. What are your thoughts on Strike Witches again? It's pretty terrible. Uh, you know, these characters do look a little Strike Witches. Witchy. You know, they, they have the hot pants. Uh, which at least is a step up from, like, full-on panty type things going on. There's an obsession with the legs of, of this, teenagers. This doesn't... If science solved all problems, why is everyone impoverished? It's actually a really good idea. Wait, is impoverished supposed to be the opposite of poverty? Yeah. Well, no. Oh. No. It's... Damn it. Imp impoverished means you're, you're in poverty, I think. Dude, they're pulling it up right now. Because oh, yeah. I haven't yet saw that word being used a whole bunch. I will say, I do not like how Moe, the character, just look. Because the main character, like... Impoverished. Reduced to poverty, poverty... Yo, oh, you're right. Um, you're right. Like it is contradictory. If science solved all problems, why are people poor? I guess yeah. science didn't solve all problems. So much for science solving all problems. I don't know. Maybe it's some sort of weird social commentary they're, they're going to do. I don't know. Like, But, okay, for honestly... Some, it spent more talking about the setting than it did talking about... Here's here's my biggest complaint. If she's fourteen year old, what 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 happened to the like the the Yoko uh, fourteen year old? Like this chick looks like she's nine. All right, what's with these characters that look like they're friggin' young as hell in everything now? <laughs> I don't know. It's 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 pretty messed up. I swear to God, if they're going to like bring back Sailor Moon. And all of a sudden, the characters are like oh. years old. Like they decide to like do a new reimagining of the series instead of following the manga or something. They never gave out any full details yet, but uh. they decide to go in a different direction. Decide to like conform to these norms. I'm gonna be so angry. I don't even like Sailor Moon that much, and even I would be angry. <laughs> I think you secretly like the show. I don't know, maybe a little. <laughs> okay. Also, they don't mention a conflict of any kind. Like, what's the show about? Like, is, is I, it, I don't know. It's supposed to be an action anime, too. They, they have a mecha designer, so there must be, like, aliens invading the world or some shit coming from the center of the Earth or Godzilla or something. Something has to happen. Because I don't want to watch a show that's just a bunch of poor people living somehow a perfect life because of science. Because that would... That'd be boring and preachy. Yeah, and and, and, and I'm a man, and I'm pro science on a lot of things too. Yeah, I'm actually pro science on almost everything. I'm actually pro science on everything. What am I saying, dude? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm pro science. I'm too, too lazy to go to church. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. I I like to sleep in on Sunday mornings. Yeah. Okay, next show: Long Live School Idol Project. And then there's a million characters that we'll never explore. <laughs> the ultimate user participation project, which lets its fans vote on the future of the fictional idol characters. What? Yeah. Online mobile phone polls have determined different aspects of the idols, such as hairstyles and costumes. It's kind of cool. The school idol project is set at a school between Tokyo's Akihabara, Kanda, and Jinbo Cho neighborhoods. The school faces the danger of being streamlined out of existence, so nine of its female students decide to become idols to protect their school and boost attendance. Uh, yeah. I felt nothing after, from reading that, just so you know, so... I, I really wanted to get excited for it because of how they're treating their fan base, I guess. But, nah, I can't do it. I can't. <laughs> All right, next next show. Train Hero. The story of Train Hero deals with a rescue team that handles disasters on a, the high-speed trains crisscrossing the world. The team undergoes transformation sequences to respond in times of crisis. Huh? I don't know how you can undergo 
So is it like so, a magical girl show that responds to yeah. train disasters? <laughs> yeah, I was hoping it's like a Super Sentai team that responds to train disasters. Ah, oh, that'd be cool, yeah. Oh, that's another show I need to, like, do, uh... uh they, they don't have a screenshot, unfortunately, so we have no idea what the art style is. We don't know is. what it is. Again, I have to do some research on it, but uh, I don't know, it looks unlikely. I mean, if the train rescue scenes are that action-packed, though, in full attention, then maybe... No. Oh. You can make that exciting. You can. Okay. I, I might watch it, depending on, on what it looks like. Okay, uh, last thing in the TV series list, Doki Doki Precure, the 10 television series in the Precure Magical Anime franchise. <gasps> I haven't even seen the original. Yeah, I've never checked out anything from that at all. Yeah. Done by Toei Animation. Get back to Dragon Ball Z, damn it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Actually, no, they are going back to Dragon Ball Z. What are you talking about? There's a movie coming out, they're making a manga. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Huh. Alright. Alright, well, now for some of the OVA specials, and if, uh... Oh my god, I think this is the one Jordan's telling me about. There is, there is a lot. More than most years, it seems. I'm going to read the first one. It's called Saint Onisan, bundled with the limited edition manga volume 8. The story imagines if Buddha and Jesus shared a low rent apartment in Tokyo. That, that actually sounds kind of interesting. That sounds awesome, man. Yeah, that's Jesus. <laughs> that, is, that is a really funny art style. Um. Oh boy. I sure hope this gets a little bit offensive. <laughs> uh, a definite watch. I I might have to check it out. Boy, I hope this gets a TV series. <laughs> All right. All right. No manko. Nura Nihon Manga, whatever, I don't care. Bundle with the limited edition manga volume 24. Why is it limited edition? Uh, Riko Nura, who is three parts human and a quarter demon. I don't, I don't even know how that happens. Lives in a house of spirits with his grandfather, uh, the current clan head of the Naru Yokai. Riko is said to be the next head of the clan, despite the fact that he dislikes his demon side. However, he soon comes to terms with his demon blood and decides to take position as the young master of the Nura house. They kind of, it feels like they kind of gave away the plot twist in that description. Yeah, it's probably because the OVA might be a continuation of some franchises. I'm actually, well, I'm actually browsing through, um, just to see if there's a show I feel like, what the hell? I know that it says right here, Oath the Mess Team, and yeah, I'm going to check that out. On, I just stumbled up on that too. That's why I said, what the hell? I'm just skimming through to see, oh wow, Carnival Phantasm. I, I need to check that out. I'm just I skimming through because I kind of want to wrap this up as soon as possible. Okay, well I want to say, but below the thing that I just read, the, uh, the Mago one, is a character that looks suspiciously like, um... Oh, shit, I lost her name. It was on the back. Ryomo from Ikitosen. Oh, that Chumbio character. Yeah, she does look like a younger version of her. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't Ryomo's eye patch on her left eye? I can't remember. It was. Okay. Girls in Panzer. A show about girls piloting tanks. So yeah, I guess we could go through. Are we gonna go through every single no. one of these OVAs? There's, there's, there's a lot. I don't feel like it. I think this video is clocking in for too long. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Well, there's tons of cool stuff. So people there's out. a handful of things I am a little bit curious about, but not fully curious to like jump right in immediately. Star Driver the movie is in the movie section. Ooh. <laughs> that sounds cool. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I need to check. I need to actually pick up. Oh yeah, I've, I forgot to look at the movies. Um, I need to finish that out. Oh, more berserk! <laughs> Can't wait till they get to the part where you know everything goes straight to hell because it's gonna look bloodier than ever. 
Yeah, literally straight I've to seen, hell. I've seen the first Berserk movie uh, that Viz released. Uh, I don't care about the fucking CG. I love that movie. Yeah, I'll probably the have CG to check it out. CG actually made it look a little exciting. I, I read most of the book. I watched the anime. I haven't checked out the new movies. I want to. It's It's a great series, although I think... It pushes boundaries a little too much. Yeah. But that is not for me to call. It's for the creator yeah. to call. I also apologize for my cynicism and, you know, almost near borderline pessimism. I, I just, I'm just not that impressed with the uh, the winter 2012 season. However, if you've got a list of shows that, you know, you disagree with me on, feel free to do so. And check them out yourselves. I don't want to discourage. The, 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 the purpose is just to tell you what's out there. And yes, I do put, throw in my opinion there. Just, you know, to, to just throw in my perspective. I don't know. I, th I think we hit a few shows in here. Yeah, we hit a few shows that we're going to give a watch. But, but like I said, most of it, I don't know. Most of it was just continuations of shows I've never seen. Uh, one of them is Italia. Oh. One is done by the first who did Strike Witches. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, um, I hope you know what's out there. Uh, so you can keep your eyes open for whatever. That's all I have to say. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, for updates on my videos and stuff. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, you can follow Multifire and his DeviantArt channel. He's now posting some artwork there. <laughs> He's getting a little better. He's getting a little better. Yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not good by any means, but I'm doing all right. <laughs> and uh, that's all. Um, leave a comment if you wish. Star Scream Two One Seven Sign Out. And I'm actually going to do a rant next time. Uh, this multi-fire. And I'll see you in future videos one day. Take care.